who is greater than Jehovah, love divine. There is no one greater than Jehovah, love divine. Excellent Jehovah, marvelous Jehovah, there is no one greater than Jehovah, love divine. Excellent Jehovah, marvelous Jehovah, there is no one greater than Jehovah, love divine. Father, we thank you for another blessed day. We thank you for allowing us to gather in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, our Messiah. We don't take this for granted, O oh Father, for we know that you have brought us together today. Your word declares that when two or three are gathered in the name of the Lord, in their midst you are. Today we gather in no other name but in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the altar that you have set before us, the altar of meeting place with you. We thank you for the anointing that you have put in this house. We thank you for sanctifying the altar with the blood of our Lord Jesus. Today we come expecting from you, Holy Spirit, we, we welcome you to have your way amongst us. Even as you speak today, we pray that our hearts will be ready, and our ears will be ready, our eyes will be ready, that we may see the wondrous things of the Lord that will bring transformation in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's always a blessing to be in the house. Amen. Amen. You are blessed because you are in the house. I am blessed because I am in the house. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I hope you received that. The word of exaltation that was given this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Whenever a word is spoken, you know, you just measure it with the word of God. And if it's true, you just accept it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The reason is because the Lord will speak when you're not expecting. You don't have to grab it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. All the time. All the time. All the, time. the Lord is good. I encourage you to keep focusing and staying dedicated when it comes to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Because I found out something about our God. Our God never changes. He is steady. We are the ones that do this. Go, swerve, 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 but he is steadfast, steadfast. So the longer we stay steadfast with him, the better our lives become. Think about in the scriptures, uh, this is not part of my message today, but the Lord is speaking, amen. amen. In the scriptures, the Lord used the farm to describe so many things to us. And one thing that we can all understand from the farm is you have to sow something in the farm. And then it takes a while before that seed germinates. Does that make sense? Yes. And then there's a harvest time. If you've ever been in the countryside, you know they have a time of sowing and a time of reaping. In the time of reaping, and you go to the farm and start trying to cultivate, they probably put chain on you. They think something is wrong with you. Because it's not the season to cultivate. It's time for to, to reap. Or even worse still, during the time of cultivating and sowing, you are sleeping. Then when it was time for harvesting, you carry your own bag stuff and run to the somebody's farm and trying to harvest. You know what they're going to do to you, obviously. What am I trying to say? In the kingdom of God, the Bible says, you know, sowing and harvest shall never do what? Cease. 
What does that mean to us? We have to constantly sow. The reason is this, when we are always sowing, we will not have a drought time. Because our seeds, the one we sowed yesterday will harvest, will be ready to be harvested. Then the one we sowed two days ago will be ready to be harvested. Then we three years ago. In other words, eventually you will have you will always have harvest season. Does that make sense? Yes. You will always have harvest season because you are constantly sowing into the Lord. What are you sowing? You're sowing your time. You're sowing the time of prayer, the time of service, the time of worship, the time you're commuting, commun communing with the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that you will not have a dry season in terms of your relationship, your connection with the Lord. I hope you receive this. Because this is, you know, I didn't talk about throwing money or anything like that. Nothing. I'm talking about staying steadfast with Jesus Christ. One of my favorite sayings is, he's never disappointed anyone. He will not start with you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. All the time. All the time. Today we we continue with our Build the Church a series that the Lord gave us at the beginning of the year. I feel one if you realize we've been on the book of Haggai. We've been on the book of Haggai the entire year. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today we are finishing Haggai, but we are not finishing Build the Church. Does that make sense? Yes. I said, by the time we finish Hagar, you will be familiar with Hagar if you've been listening. If you haven't, uh, we've been saving the message and we'll put it on our website, rccgdlovedivine.org. So <clears throat> I encourage you to go back and look go through it. Building the church, again, the Lord said to us, building the church is not necessarily building a building. That's not what he's talking about. Talking about the church. We are the church. So building the church is actually building us. We are the building block of the church of Jesus Christ. You might be a nail, you might be a window, you might be a door friend, but you are part of the church if you are a born again Christian. This is why when David was so eager, man after God's own heart. He wanted to do so much for God. He said, I will build a temple for my God. Before David, there was no temple. They just had a tabernacle. You know, they roll up and move with them. <coughs> I will build a temple. Because the Lord said to him, I know your heart, David, but you will not build a temple for me. Your son will build the temple. Of course, David, in his time and his desire to love God, he understood it the way he can understand it. He was not in the kingdom yet. Just like us today, we have some words, the way we understand the desire depends on where we are in relationship with the Lord. David thought that the Lord was talking about his son, one of his sons to build the temple. He said, okay, I will prepare everything that is needed to build this temple. So he prepared everything in wait. When Solomon came along, Solomon already had the tools, praise the Lord, and he erected this structure. When Solomon finished building, he kept started worshiping God. He did a great offering before the Lord. And he did all this offering, and God gave him a revelation. And all of a sudden he said, who can build a house for God? God is too big to dwell in a house built with hand. Praise the Lord. Because now we know that when he said, My, your son shall build this temple. He's talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. He will build the church. Amen. Amen. And the church is not a physical building. The church are those who are born again. This is why I say, stop going to church. If you go to church, you are just saying, I, I come to meet the people of God and I go home. 
You are the church. You can't go to yourself. Praise the Lord. Amen. Assemble together as the church. When we all assemble, we form the church. Amen. Amen. If we are not fully assembled, we are not complete. It's like a house without windows or doors. It's not as strong as it should be. Praise the Lord. Amen. So when it, the Lord said to us, build the church, it's actually saying to us, build yourself in the Lord. Build yourself spiritually. Grow in the Lord. And when you do, not only are you going to be strong, the church will be strong. Amen. Amen. Don't ever see yourself as, oh, I attend that church. If you keep saying that, your, your tongue kind of exposes you. You say, I am part of that church. Amen. Amen. I am part of this church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anyhow, so today we are going to kind of round up Hey guy. Hey guy has showed us a lot of things. And from Hegai, I just want to recount how far we've come with Hegai. Only two chapters. Chapter 1 and chapter 2. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It would be funny if I said only two chapters, chapter 1 and chapter 3. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't be too serious. It's not that serious. Amen. Amen. The praise of the Lord should be a, you know, I, oh, let me say this. I don't know. I'm, I'm talking to this. When I became uh, born again initially and filled with the Holy Spirit, He used to do something to me. When the Spirit comes upon me, you know something? When He comes upon me, I start going crazy. When He comes upon me, I just, I can't even talk anymore. I will just, you know, quiet. Like go into myself. I don't care if me or not, I'm just quiet into myself. Other people be going, I'm going the other way around. It's almost like if I'm praying or something, it comes to me, oh, well, you better not have to pray yourself because I'll stop going for it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But as, you know, you continue, you begin to learn how to handle the presence of the Spirit in you. So that if you are ministering to somebody or something, you're not, you don't lose it. When the person is still with you, maybe you're trying to cancel somebody or whatever, and the spirit comes upon you all of a sudden, you lose control. You're not supposed to lose control. Amen? Amen. The spirit of the what is subject to the prophet. Praise the Lord. Amen. So be cheerful in the presence of the Lord. Lighten up if the enemy overloaded you with all kinds of stuff. Know that. He who is with you is God than that which is in the world. Amen. Amen. He will always come through for his people. Yes. That is the hope we have in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Though a thousand may fall on my side and ten thousand on my right, that thing will not happen to me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Not because I'm perfect, but because he's watching over me. I'll tell you another story. As a little kid, probably seven years old, remember during the, the Civil War, I told this story a long time ago, and I was, you know, we, we had to run to the village because the war was crazy all over the place. So I was with my uncle, and we went to the farm, and he gave me a basket to carry for him to go home. And as soon as he put it on my head and he walked away, from nowhere, this big tree just fell. Boom! Where I was. And as I was standing with the stuff, the tree fell. It would have hit me and, of course, destroyed me. But where I was standing, there was a youth on this tree. Okay, if something happened to you when you were six and you still remember like yesterday, I was like a U-shape on this, on this uh, what do you call it? The, the branch, big old branch, and the tree continued. So where I was standing was just enough shape to hold me. The basket enough, I was still holding it. My uncle looked at it. I can still see him. He started dancing, started dancing. I think he was the one against Christian, but there was a song he used to sing in those days. Started dancing, 
He said, his God has saved me. And what would he have said to my parents? Oh, that he took me to the farm and killed me over there. I remember that like yesterday. And as a child, I looked at it, I looked at it. For some reason, my heart my God, your God, oh my God, which one saved me though? I said, well, okay, but the point I'm saying, making is this. Even before we started trying to come to the Lord, he was already planning out our lives. Amen. 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 He was already protecting us, even when we didn't even know about him. So don't give up on Jesus. No matter what the enemy is throwing at you today, do not give up on Jesus. Amen. Amen. He will surely come through for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I said we are going to round up, but before we round up, I just want to remind us of what we have already said from here, guy. The Lord said to us, build the church. You say, guy, to lay the foundation. Part one, if you remember, we say, go to the mountain. The title was, go to the mountain. And we said, the Lord used it to remind us that it's not all the time that we tell the mountain, be lifted up and be cast away. He said, sometimes we have to go to the mountain. Because in the mountain, mountain is what? A difficult place. Mountain is where we deal with issues. When you climb mountain, you use up energy. It's not easy. If you've ever done any kind of exercise and you try to run up hill, it's not easy. Praise the Lord. Amen. But the Lord said, go to the mountain in this case. Don't run from the mountain. Or don't pray that the mountain, this mountain be removed. Go to this mountain. Why? Because on this mountain I have left trees. Wood that you will use to build the temple for me. In other words, when you climb that mountain, you will find building material for your life. You will find things that will build you up. You will find things that will grow you and make you stronger. Or make you have, learn how to grow, how to develop in the right way. So you go to the mountain. In other words, those things that the enemy is throwing at you, God will change it and use it for your own good. Amen? Amen. Then he said, bring it in little. Bring it in little. He said, I want you to pay attention that for some reason you think you've been working hard and nothing, you have nothing to show for it. You've been trying and you're not doing as well as you think you should. The Lord said, it's because you're doing your own thing. You're not paying attention to what God wants you to do. You're doing your own thing. This is why he was talking to the children of Israel, but we can relate to this in our own natural, in our own lives today. He said you're doing your own thing. You think that you can prosper the way you want by doing your own thing. But I am the one that can prosper you the right way. Praise the Lord. Amen. So he said, stop struggling and not working and not producing as much as you want. Then he says, I am with you, by chapter 3 of our, of our, of our uh, series. It says, I am with you. Even though you are going through what you are going through right now, even though you have been afflicted, everybody has seen your affliction, and they are wondering, but you said you belong to Jesus. You said you are doing, you are faithful to the Lord. Why are you the one who is suffering the way you are suffering? The Lord said, in all that, no. That I'm with you. Amen. Amen. Know that I'm watching. I'm walking step by step with you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then, four, it said, the latter glory. The latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former. What is it saying? Whatever thing you thought you have achieved in the past. He said to the children of Israel, you haven't seen anything yet. He said, whatever thing you said, you think you're, you've done so well and look where you are now, you don't have not much to show for it. He said, I have a plan for you and your life. Your latter glory going forward shall be better than anything you have had in the past. Amen. Amen. So he was encouraging them as the Lord is encouraging us today. Say, your latter glory shall be greater than your former. 
The same people that saw you when you went through the stuff, they will see you in your new glory. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then the one last time was purification for service. Purification before serving the Lord. We learn that before we can actually begin to enter into the fullness of what the Lord has in plan for his body, for his church, who we are. He said, when we come to serve the Lord in any capacity, we should be purified. Amen? Amen. We should be purified. Because he told us, showed us that, that contamination is possible in the house of God. You remember what we talked about last time? When he said, if somebody is carrying holy thing on him and he touch on holy stuff, will the un will your holy stuff become holy because the person who is carrying was carrying holy thing? The answer was no. The whole unholy thing will remain unholy. Then he said, if an unholy person carrying on holy thing come and touch holy thing. When the holy thing become unholy, the answer became yes. Go read it again, again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What is that saying to us? We can't just come any which way to touch the things of God. Because we bring pollution to the things of God. This is why even in your house, you can be living in a secret sin and you are praying for blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You can't do that and expect God to rubber stamp what you are praying for. God will not touch that thing. The only thing God wants from a sinner is prayer of what? Repentance. So this is why we said from here going forward in Love Divine, we want to be part of the uh, early morning workers' prayer, praise the Lord, Amen. before we start service. So if you miss the early morning workers' prayer, what is early morning? Just when we start that time, if you miss that time, that when you come to church and that they don't serve, just sit down and enjoy, praise the Lord. Amen. But we are trying to purify as much as we can. The Lord has already sanctified the altar. Let us do our best as an individual. Do your best to know that you are clean before the Lord so that your service will not be uh, rejected. Amen. Amen. Remember the story of Nadab and Abihu when they, they pro provided a, a Bible called profane fire before the Lord. They came to serve the Lord without cleansing themselves. And they were killed right away. Today, people don't drop dead right away. They say a lot of things drop in their lives. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. So the Lord taught us with that. He taught us to prepare ourselves for purification before we serve the Lord in any capacity. Because our God is holy. He is holy. Satan and his cocos were chased out of heaven because they became unholy. And they drove, they were driven out of heaven. We don't want to be driven out of the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen. We don't want to be driven out of the presence of the Lord. So let us do our part to do that. What is right. Of course, all these messages, like I said, we are saving them, so I'm going to upload them to our website. And I encourage you to be to go to the website and begin to look at stuff. I know nobody has gone because nobody has told me. I can't find it because I haven't put it up yet. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And also I encourage you on Wednesday, join the Bible study. This is why people will say that, oh, you know, I was in that church for two, two, two years and I really didn't grow much. You didn't grow because you weren't doing Bible study. Amen. Amen. You have to join the Bible study. It's a time of discussion. It's a time of, you know, developing yourself. So I encourage you join. This, we stop coming to the church so that we can do it from home. So we can say, you know what? It's too. Far. I don't have time. Blah, blah. Now we all have time. Our cell phone is the connection. Our computers are the connection. Praise the Lord. There's no reason why we shouldn't have at least. 
15, 20 people connected every Wednesday. There is really no reason. There's not much we can do except to present this thing for us. And when you connect, you share. You share your connection to what I do that you can join. That is part of your service. You're serving the Lord when you expose the things of God to other people. Amen. Amen. You're actually serving the Lord in that capacity. So I encourage you to join. Amen. 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 So going forward, the title for this today's message is I will bless you. I will bless you. The Lord has gone through Haggai and shown the children of Israel why they have acknowledged the fact that they are not doing as well as they think they should be doing. Then he told them why they were not doing as well. And he told them how they can do as well. Praise the Lord. And then he said, I will be with you to help you do even better than you think, and I will bless you. But the Lord is saying to us today, maybe you're not doing as well as you think you should, but know this for a fact, that God wants to bless you. Amen? Amen. 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 They say, bless me, Lord. Wow, Lord bless me, Lord. But see, nobody said that. I, I, think, I, I put it to a solo to see whether there is. So what does that mean? Are, you, are we in the zone where we say, okay, this is the summer time, as soon as it's finished, we can move to the next one. You know. You have to stay alert, amen? amen. You have to stay alert because as the Lord is speaking, you never know when the word for you will drop. You have to know how to pick it up and put it in your pocket. The Lord said, say, bless me, Lord. We should say, bless me, Lord. Let's try again. Bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Here you go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he said, I will bless you. So we're going to look at why the Lord is saying that how he will do it for us. I will bless you. Remember, we are the building block of the church of God. So when the Lord blesses us, he's blessing his church. Let us start by looking at Haggai 15, 2, 15. He says, and now carefully consider from this day forward, from before stone was laid upon stone in the temple of the Lord. He said, and now carefully consider from this day forward. He said, pay attention from this day forward. He said, consider from this day forward. I want you to think carefully. That's what the Lord is saying to us. Don't be casual about anything that concerns the Lord. He said, never forget the past. Never forget the past. Never forget your times of struggle. Praise the Lord. He said, from this day forward, Consider what you dealt with, where you are. Before. Why is he saying this to them? Because he's preparing to bless them. And if you know anything about human beings, when people are in need, they will go to the Lord, they will spend time with the Lord, they will cry to the Lord, they are willing to do everything. This is why people say, oh, you know, they give you three days to fast. Oh, you fast four days. They say pray for one hour, oh, you pray for two hours. But once the comfort starts coming, all of a sudden, you know, in this church, they don't even fast. After two years, they don't fast in this church. What is that? You know, because you stopped fasting, praise the Lord. Things are not comfortable. Church becomes a casual thing, you know, thing of convenience. The Lord is saying to us, I'm about to bless you. I'm about to take you from your time of trouble into a realm of blessing. But don't forget your time of trouble. Amen? Yeah. Because people, when they forget, they stop spending time with the Lord. They stop spending time with the Lord. Don't forget. The children of Israel are very comfortable. They are very they do that a lot. When they have problem, they will run to the Lord. When the Lord gives them solution, 
they forget the Lord. And now all of a sudden, the people around them, oh, and these people have idols in their, their temple. Why don't we have idols? You know, we worship this invisible God. They must erect our own idol. You know? So they will do stuff. Until they start having problems, they run back to God again. And they destroy the idol they built so that the Lord can bless them. The Lord is saying to us, whatever thing that you are dealing with today, when the blessing of the Lord comes, don't forget where you are as you move forward. Amen. 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 Hey guy, 217. He said, I struck you with blight and mildew and hail and all the labors of your hands, yet you did not turn to me. Think about it. Again, I said to us, sometimes we always blame Satan for everything. You know? If here the Lord is saying that he was the one who did some of this stuff, but he was doing it in good faith, praise the Lord. He was doing it for a reason. He was not doing it to destroy his people. So what is that saying to us? Sometimes when we are going through things in our lives, let us, instead of blaming Satan all the time, let us turn and ask ourselves, first, am I where in my own understanding, am I where I should be with the Lord? Not in somebody else, not in what the pastors understand. It. My own personal, do I think that I'm being as, you know, connected to my Lord as I should be? Every one of us can answer that question. Praise the Lord. Honestly, because nobody's asking you that, you're asking yourself. The Lord said, I struck you, even will do. I put around your stuff. You create, you have yourself and put it in the bag. When you come back, it's all covered with mud, so you can't hear it. You run away. Say, I did it. Some people tight to the devil. You know what tightening to the devil means? When you're spending your money in things you shouldn't spend your money in. I'm not saying about buying nice things. I'm saying wasting your money because of all kinds of problems, right? You know, somebody maybe just bought a brand new car and paid cash and forgot to get insurance. As soon as he was driving, boom, boom, something hit the car. Now you have to spend half of the money again to rebuild the car. That's tied into the devil. Because you're not supposed to have accident. Praise the Lord. It's a waste of money. Nobody wants to waste his money or her money. So when we say we are protected, the Lord is the one that's protecting us, we have to use wisdom. If we do it what we are supposed to do, most of the time we will be protected. Praise the Lord. Amen. He said, He said he struck them and yet they didn't talk to him. But he did that to get their attention. He did that to protect them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody that the Lord doesn't like, Lord could care less. There's a prayer that got to me. I pray that prayer sometimes. I've also come to realize that I'm not like I'm post negative. My prayer is, to me, is valuable. What do I mean by that? I don't believe in just, just spraying prayer all over the place. The book of John, chapter 17 or 15, you know, when the Lord said to us, so when he was praying, we actually saw the Lord pray. You know, not too many places in the Bible that you saw Jesus pray. Have you ever think thought about that? The Bible said he often goes out and pray all through the night, but he never told us how he prays. This is why the disciples one day come and say, hey, if what you're saying that one day you're going to go away is true, can you teach us how to pray? We say, you know, we've been with you for how many years? We don't even really see you pray. We know you're going to pray, but we don't know what you say. So we don't see too many prayers from the Lord, but we know he's, he's a man that spends his life praying. What am I trying to say? One day we saw him pray. He was praying for his disciples. 
He said to the father, keep them. They were yours, but you gave them to me. Keep them like you kept me. He said that I may be in them and they be in me, just like I'm in you and you in me. He said, I'm not praying for the world. I'm praying for these ones and the one that will come after them. Sometimes the Lord pays attention to his people. Amen. 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 And the same way, sometimes the Lord will chastise his people because he wants to whip them to shape. Hebrews 12, 6 to it says, For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. The Bible is saying that sometimes when you are afflicted, pray that it was God that afflicted you. Uh, you say, what? Well, I said, when you are afflicted, you're already afflicted. Praise the Lord. Amen. Pray that it is God. That means that the same God who afflicted you will eventually come and take care of that affliction and make life better than it was before. God afflicted Job. People thought Satan afflicted Job. God afflicted Job. Took everything he had. What do you Satan to do? He said, I didn't know God was using him. At the end, Job recovered double what he had. Even the ten children, God gave me a new ten children. Not only that, Job recovered physically, he also recovered the spirit to be born again. And I said to you, Job was one of the ones in paradise waiting for the coming of the Lord. Amen. 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 So sometimes God will afflict us, but when we recognize it is God, and we turn to him, he will turn it around. That is what the Bible is telling us. The Lord said, I afflicted you, but just to get your attention. Now, I'm about to show you why I needed to get your attention. I'm about to bless you. Amen? Amen. I'm about to bless you. You should be encouraged, you should be excited that God is ready to bless you in a special way. Amen. 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 Hey, guy, two nine. He said, "Is the seed still in the barn? As yet, the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have not yielded fruit. But from this day, I will bless you." Amen. Amen. He said, "Yeah, look at your barn. Still nothing. You're not seeing anything yet. But from this day, I have determined that I am going to bless you." This is where you say, Lord, as you have said, let it be unto me, Lord. So you say, bless me, Lord. Hallelujah. This is where we should learn from Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus. Say, I don't understand these things, but Lord, as you have spoken, let it be unto me. Amen. 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 And that is all we need to do. But God is saying to you, you have struggled enough. The Lord is saying to our CCG, Love Divine as a church, you have struggled enough. People of God, you have struggled enough. You have to get excited to receive God's blessing. Amen. 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 You have to get excited to receive God's blessing. Say, I will shake heaven and earth for you. I will shake heaven and earth for you. He said, I will defeat and overthrow kingdoms for you. That is what the Lord was saying. He recognized that there are kingdoms around the children of Israel, always oppressing them. Just today, you have kingdoms, spiritual kingdoms. The Bible says we don't war against flesh and blood. We war against principalities and powers. The Lord said, I will defeat principalities and powers for you so that you can ride on and receive your blessings. So you can claim the things that you need to claim in your life. 
I will give you special grace, says the Lord. This is your time. The Lord said to Zerubbabel, my servant, the Lord is saying to us today, this is our time. This is where, this is the reason where if you're praying, you are praying in your own private time, your morning prayer time, you're saying to the Lord, I know this is my time. Bless me that I may be a blessing. Amen. Amen. Bless me that I may be a blessing to your church. Amen. Amen. It's another secret. You don't just get blessing and say, okay, it's just for me. A child of God is a vessel. A vessel that the Lord uses to impact other people's lives. Until we understand that we are not growing in the Lord. When you wake up on Sunday and you say, I'm going to unite with the people of God, with my brethren, you have the mindset, I'm going there to prepare to serve God. Amen. Amen. And when you have, whenever I spoke in a church on Sunday, you are taking it with you during the week, looking for opportunity to represent Jesus out there. That is what being a child of God is about. The Lord says to Israel, don't remain a casual believer. That's what he's saying to us. I am about to bless you. Don't forget when things were not as good as it is about to get for you soon. So that you will not fall back to what you used to be. I am about to bless you. Don't, be, don't put your faith in your own abilities and your own possessions. I am about to bless you, says the Lord. I'm about to bless you. Don't forget who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Amen? Amen. I'm about to bless you. Let us stand in faith before the Lord and begin to prepare to receive our blessing. The Bible says that going forward, the Lord is about to bless us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is about to bless us. So when we say we want to serve the Lord, you want to serve, you want to say to yourself, Lord, I know you are about to bless me. And your blessing comes with service. This special blessing that we're talking about comes with service to those who are willing to do the will of the Lord. Hey guy was all about people of God doing the will of God. And in their doing the will of God, their blessing is automatic for them. Amen. 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 Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. Come, sweet Spirit, we pray. Come, in your strength and your power. Come, in your own spirit.